guess when it comes to like lasting power of a game, um, we're talking we're talking retro games, you know. Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. we go back and we play retro games, we don't necessarily want to go to the ones with the best graphics because they are so bad now compared to what we've got, <laughs> right? So what we go yeah. back to, what we're actually going back to is, is when we're retro gaming, um, the charm of the graphics are just definitely there, right. no matter how good or bad they are. Um, but we're going back to the gameplay. And I think that when we're talking about like SNES, Genesis, things like that, a lot of the time, I could, you could put in any game, I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you if it was a launch title. Right. You know what I mean? So as long as the gameplay is there, I think that for retro gaming, that's where I go. When we're talking about the, the newest, best thing, a lot of that, that technical prowess is, is what I'm looking for, especially for like the new consoles. Yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right, man. Um, in fact, a lot of the graphics on the older games were, were downright terrible. Um, of course, we didn't know that at the time. There was just, it was just a game, you know? Right. Um, and I mean, it, like, let's be honest, I mean, if, if you get the opportunity to sit there with sticky notes and make pixel art at your desk at work, um, you're still probably not going to have those detailed sprites like that right? they had at the That's time. True. So give them a little credit, a little bit of credit. Um, so have you ever played um, Little Nemo? No. Okay. So Little Nemo, like it had good graphics for the Nintendo Entertainment System, um, but I mean by today's graphics it's just there's no comparison. It, it, it's dead in the water compared to those ones. But the gameplay itself is really fun. It's a platformer. You run around and you're uh, you're finding these animals and you throw candy to them. And then <laughs> after you give them three pieces of candy, um, you basically can like ride that animal throughout the level. Um, so zoo simulator. So yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You, th you go to the zoo, you throw candies at the animals, and then you just go in there and ride them around. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, I mean, but that that gameplay, it's it's fun, and so like to me, that game still holds up today. Really? Even though the graphics. Uh, yeah, what was it called? Good. Little Nemo. Little Nemo. Yeah, well, not Finding Nemo. Little Nemo. Oh right. I think it's Little Nemo's. Oh man, it's like Little Nemo's Dream. Something. What platform? NES. NES? Cool. I'll have to check that one out. So, next question here. Um, what game, like when you're playing it, has made you feel the most emotionally? Like, you're like, wow, this game is, is powerful. Um, that's easy. The Walking Dead. Yeah? Um, Telltale's Walking Dead. Uh, no spoilers, but uh, it took a couple chapters to get in, and I mean, even with the way that the graphics are, they're kind of that cell shade. The Wolf Among Us yeah. is very yeah. similar. Um, but there was a particular scene, and I, I won't spoil it, but, you know, as far as, like, uh, myself being a father, yeah. there was a, I mean, it probably wouldn't have the same impact on people who aren't parents, but for me, like, there was this, there was a scene where I was just, like, like, I could, I could feel the, I could feel the, the lump in my throat, but I'm too much of a man to cry, so. <laughs> so, for those of you guys who don't know, that game style, it's, it kind of plays almost like a, a movie or a book does more than, like, more than like a button smashing mm -hmm. video game. So you're given these choices and you have to choose, you know, maybe one, two, three or four different things and and you only have a certain amount of time to choose these and it really pulls at your heartstrings. Do, do I go here? Do I do I save this person? Do I check out this area? Um, for sure, that's, that's definitely one of those games that does that. Um, I think for me, um, the first game that I remember that really like pulled at my heartstrings was Fable. Have you played that one? Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's a choice in Fable where you have to choose between, you know, saving a family member or this like badass sword. No. Oh. Um, I obviously took the badass sword <laughs> and then felt immediately just terrible about it. <laughs> yeah. But well then. But then I just ran around killing people with the I was, awesome I was just going to say, I mean, <laughs> you made yourself feel better because you went and you just pampered yourself by slaughtering everybody. Yeah, yeah I yeah. guess so. But I mean, I, I until that point, there wasn't really a game that really made me uh, feel conscious about the decisions I was making. Even though right. it's just a virtual world, sure. I was still like, whoa, that's that's really deep. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was kind of a... Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, we, we tend to say, well, it's just a game or... You know, it's just a movie, things like that. But uh, the I think part of it too is that we need to kind of find ways to relate to the characters and relate to the situations. Cool. So I mean, that's what I think why The Walking Dead had an influence on me was because it was like I had to sort of put myself in that position with real people. 
and I was kind of like, oh man. And like, just like in Fable, if you put yourself in that position where it's like, man, I'm, you know, this is my, 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 uh, sibling or, or my yeah. brother or my, my, uh, my parents, you know, you think about your real parents and you're like, wow, that'd be a really screwed up thing yeah. to do. And then of course, being retro prime, you did it. You took the sword. <laughs> Dude, the sword was badass. I'm not even going to lie. I'm sure other people took the sword too. All right. So, the sword. um, the youth of today, man, right? They've got uh -huh. their new fancy video game systems. If they came to you and they said, hey, Cody, um, I want to get into retro gaming. What system do I buy? Which one would you recommend for a purchase? Okay, so... And cost, let's say cost doesn't matter. Cost doesn't matter. Uh, you know, this is a kind of a, a sort of um, a difficult question because I think that when we're talking about retro, mm -hmm. um, retro to me is rooted in nostalgia. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like for example, I if someone was like, oh man, you need to play that Atari 2600, <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> right. Because I I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I love it, but... Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely cool. Like looking at the aesthetics, all you know, and and uh, looking at some of the games and stuff, it's definitely like a cool thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not. I don't have any nostalgia attached to it. So when there's crappy mechanics and things like and crappy graphics, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, this is just crappy mechanics and crappy graphics. But if I were to be like, you know, looking, like, go to my son and be like, you know what, son, we're gonna sit down, and we're gonna play some Bubble Bobble. Yeah, he would be like. Where's the iPad? <laughs> well, okay. Well, let me let me make it easier on you. Okay. You're at a garage sale. Okay. Right? Here we go. The kid comes up. He says, "Hey, I have five dollars. I see. And I'm just saying five dollars. Super Nintendo, Sega, normal Nintendo, and let's say PlayStation One mm -hmm. and Dreamcast. <laughs> all right. So you have all these choices. I, yeah. I know I would take the Dreamcast, but what would you recommend? Say out of all those ones. Here you go. Here's five bucks. What do you buy? Um, well, I would have to say, as far as like gaming history and getting a good understanding of retro gaming in general, mm -hmm. I would say the Super Nintendo. Totally, uh, man. I think that that's probably um, the greatest console of all time. Yeah. Um, in in a, in a contextually speaking, not necessarily my favorite. My favorite would be PS One, but um, I mean we had the, that was the end of the 16-bit era. Uh, where games were all 2D, besides yeah. the exceptions of Star Fox and whatnot. Um, the controller was actually pretty similar to what we have now on like the Xbox 360 yeah. or PS3. Yeah, with we the... had the face buttons and the triggers, right? So totally. it would be a, a somewhat familiar experience in a lot of ways, but I think that there's a lot of gaming history there yeah. that I think is important to people that are around our age. It was a well-rounded system. I mean, there was a lot of different games you could get for that. Mm -hmm. If you like sports games, there, there was... You know, there was tons sport, of sports ones. Sports you games. fighting games. You had it. Street you know? Fighter 2. You yeah. had Street Fighter 2 straight up. So, exactly. You know, uh, RPGs were there. All right, that's it for part two of Retro Talk with Prime and Cody. Stick around for the finale coming up next.